Rock of Ethereal here, and my goal has been to get good at Pac-Man Championship Edition DX Plus or Die Trying. And I'm happy to say, after about two weeks, that I have absolutely achieved that goal. Now, in my last video, my intermediate video, I said that my concrete goal was going to be to S-rank every course. And as you can see here, for the applicable courses, I have done just that. There are a couple of courses, such as Free and Championship 3, which is either bugged or there's just a there's just a, a play mode in that that's locked for some reason beyond my comprehension. So I kind of excluded that. There's only there's only this one mode that I'm I'm not sure how to unlock because I'm pretty sure I own the DLC for this according to Steam. But it doesn't matter. I've gotten into the top five percent in every single course, and when you look at the overall leaderboard, uh, that calculates to about the point. 13% the top 0.13% of players worldwide this has been a bit of a rough journey it's taken a lot of time to be sure there's a lot of time consuming play modes especially given all of the time trial shorts for most of the courses there's at least 10 of these which when I went through them all the first time, I didn't necessarily get an S on the time trial total, which is what it actually grades you on, not on each individual time trial, and so there was a lot of replaying that had to be done there. In one course especially, in the Big Eater course, this course was a huge pain in the ass because there were some unexpectedly difficult time trials for most of the game. Completing a time trial would be an incredibly easy matter. It, it wasn't your skill that was really in question, it was just how well were you able to really game the system to be efficient in the paths you took through the pellets and the ghosts in order to save as much time as possible. With Big Eater, there were a couple of time trials that were so difficult that I struggled just to complete the time trials within the minute or the 30 seconds that I was given. Uh, just absolutely out of nowhere, extremely hard. But most of the game, the completion itself was really easy. I don't think I really got an S rank on any of the score attacks on my first try. Those took a lot of a lot of work and a lot of experimentation. Uh, absolutely almost every single one of them required multiple playthroughs. Now I, I think the reason you're seeing all these these blue arrows here pointing down is because people have beaten my scores uh, since I was last on here, and so it's it's showing you that I've moved down in the leaderboards a little bit. But let me let me show you what this looks like now that I've really gotten into this, and I can give you some more of the details that I've been made aware of. So not all of the score attacks have this, not even for the five minutes. There's all these weird arbitrary discrepancies between the different courses in this game and it's really beyond reason to me. I understand that they introduced a lot of courses as additional DLC. I just bought the game with all the DLC to begin with so I kind of got the full unorganized experience and that's really what it is. But for most of the five minute score attacks there are three difficulty levels. Now, these difficulty levels, as you can see at the top of the screen, will affect the number of lives and the number of bombs you have available. But let's be honest, if you have gotten to the point where you're playing on Expert all the time, you're probably not too concerned about losing two lives. In fact, losing all of my lives was something that pretty much never happened at any point during this process. It... Really, I think they could have gotten away with just giving the player one extra life across all modes. I don't think anybody would have really had a hard time with that. And the reason I say that is because on beginner, you're, you're starting at game speed one. It says there at the bottom, and game speed one is just pathetically slow. Like, I'm just going to show you a few seconds of what this looks like. Oh my goodness, I can't. I, it's, it's just absolutely painful, the speed of this. I... I can't imagine what kind of awful score you would end up with if you got an, an absolutely perfect godlike run for five minutes straight on this difficulty. Uh, it's just really a waste of time for anybody except for the people who just have to start there because they can't move up to the harder stuff yet. The harder stuff 
would be normal and expert, of course, where normal starts you at game speed 10, which is still pretty slow, and expert starts you at game speed 20. Obviously, if you want to maximize your scoring potential, and because you are on a five minute time limit, no matter what the difficulty is, you're always going to want to start on expert so that you can get up to those faster speeds and reach the maximum of 50 as soon as possible. Now, having played so much of this at this point, I've spoken to a friend who is a fan of speedrunning, and I described to them how it seemed like everything in this game was based off of tenths of a second. What I mean by that is that there seems to be some apparent RNG, meaning random number generation, in the pattern of the ghosts that wander. Not the ghosts that are snaking behind me right now, the wandering ghosts, because there are a few of those, and in fact those are probably the biggest threat that you'll generally face. But what I noticed, especially as I was getting into the harder courses, was that if I had the exact same response time in the beginning of a level for 10 attempts in a row, and, th and this has happened before because some of those courses were very hard as I said, the wandering ghost would still move in exactly the same pattern, it was perfectly predictable. And so. My friends told me about this thing called RNG manipulation, which is a term in the speedrunning community. And what that means is that it, it's this... It's when a game's algorithm for something such as the movements of the ghosts here is determined by... An, it is determined by the passage of time. So in other words, if tenths of a second changes where a ghost is consistently every time it will always result in that ghost being in the same place if the same time is recorded over and over that's kind of what that is and, and i've never heard of that concept before but that's what i've been seeing a lot here because i would i would get that consistency if i had that exact same time during the beginning of the level now i, I specify the beginning because obviously my time is going to change a lot more as I progress further into the level. When I say tenths of a second, I really do mean tenths of a second. It seems as if this game was very explicitly designed around, okay, the player is here at this point in time when they finish clearing this wave of pellets. So if they have taken the ideal path, then they are going to be at this other specified point. And that's what everything is designed around, or at least what everything appears to be designed around. It, it makes for this, this very odd feeling as you start to realize that every, every decision you make has a much more sophisticated consequence than what you really anticipated. It, it's one of those things that you just wouldn't know unless you got to this point in the game where you needed this much skill and you were making the, this many decisions this quickly. Obviously, I, I'm having a bit of a, a mediocre run for what you might expect. That's just a consequence of me talking as I'm doing this. I'm uh, doing pretty well in some circumstances. As you can see, I've, I've really got a feel for when to bomb and when not to bomb. And you'll also notice that if there's a ghost in my way, I'm usually not going to move. And the reason for that is that there's this odd pattern of movement where if a ghost, if a wandering ghost is headed towards you, say, like, directly towards you, then they're actually going to take the next turn that's available to them, and they're not going to run into you. That's one of the quirks of this bizarre algorithm I keep mentioning. And you can kind of see it over and over again, like, right there. I knew that that blue ghost was not going to run into me because it had a turn available to it, and it took that turn. I don't know if that's something that comes from the classic Pac-Man gameplay, but it's here, and it's something I've really gotten used to, which is why I haven't actually had any collisions yet. I'm not necessarily expecting the, for this to be a perfect run, in fact it's, it's almost over, I've got about 45 seconds remaining. Uh, my score would be mediocre at best, for sure. Usually I will get at least uh, 1.5 million in a, in a five minute score attack. I've had to use multiple bombs, which, have, which of course is slowing me down. But 
I did reach the maximum game speed fairly quickly, so it, it wasn't terrible. It's just probably the lowest score I've gotten on this map on score attack with five minutes. I'll just let this finish up here, and I'll show you kind of some of the other interesting stuff because there's there's a big part of the content that I just haven't covered at all yet. It's a mode called Ghost Combo, which is one of the most interesting parts of this game. Oh, okay, you know what? I'm just eating my words there because apparently that was my high score. I thought that was terrible. Uh, anybody who played this game well would probably agree that that was terrible, even if it didn't look awful. I took a lot of paths that were not ideal. I, I got distracted a lot and I, I took a lot of turns that I shouldn't have taken. It took me too long to get through a lot of the patterns. Doesn't matter. Moving on. I need to find a mode that has the ghost combo in it, like this one. Oh, look at that, I haven't even done this one. Uh, Manhattan had a lot of content that people just didn't play a whole lot of, and so it wasn't so difficult to get into an S rank on this one. Obviously, it was easier to get an S rank on some courses than others. Okay, so ghost combo. Ghost combo is bizarre right off the bat because it gives you 99 lives gives you five bombs to start with and every time you die you get those five bombs back and the objective is to eat the most ghosts in a row well what does in a row mean in a row means that you need to lengthen the duration of your power up as long as possible and eat as many ghosts between the point where you pick up your first power up and the point where your power-up expires. Now, when you get another power pellet, like that ghost on the left here is holding, that completely refreshes the duration of your power pellet. You're probably already starting to see how this completely changes the way the game plays. In a very interesting way, I have to say uh, kudos to Namco for including this mode the way they did, because it's, it's very interesting. So right now, I'm just gathering up ghosts. And I'm not going to eat a whole lot of ghosts uh, right off the bat, or at least I'm going to try to stay away from eating the ghosts that are in the train. Now, you remember when I said wandering ghosts? There's there's a an aspect to that that makes this game interesting, com interestingly complex in a completely different way. What I mean by that is that you don't necessarily know whether a ghost is going to be wandering or a snake ghost, part of the trail, until it starts moving around. Because I, I don't fully understand this part yet, I will happily admit. There are some instances in which you can trigger, you can awaken a ghost, and it might join up with the snake of ghosts. Even though it's acting like a wandering ghost, it just it's just aggressively moving in your direction. And that's kind of the only signal that it's going to uh, to join up with the other ghosts instead of just wandering around like the four classic ghosts do. So, in some cases, you're kind of having to guess, okay, uh, is this ghost actually going to hunt me down? Do I need to take any special course of action here? But just an interesting little tidbit. Now, uh, you'll notice that my patterns are just straight up bizarre here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to eat all of these pellet ghosts that are a part of the pattern. And the reason I'm eating those guys is because if I don't, they'll just disappear with the other ghosts when I grab the next fruit in the sequence. Or in this case, espresso, because why not? And the reason this is good is because I am both increasing this combo, you can see every time I eat a ghost it's adding to this combo, and I'm refreshing the duration of my power. In addition, I'm increasing my speed, because my game speed is almost maxed out now, and that's going to help me a lot in the, in the near future. Like I said, there is a, a 10 minute time limit, and while that may seem like a lot, fact remains I still have a limited time to not only eat the ghosts but to sort of arrange things 
as well as possible so that I have the largest ghost chain possible when the time finally comes for me to chow down. Uh, that was some foolish maneuvering on my part. I got a little bit unlucky. I think the red ghost there was, was a hunter. It was actually looking for me. That's another thing about this game. Once you start to screw up, it's really hard to get back on track. It, it's just very difficult to sort of restore the, the plans that you had and get back in the right direction. It, you can definitely see that this mode is particularly difficult because you, you need to almost have the course memorized. Oh my goodness. The reason I say that is because you have to know where, you have to anticipate where the power pellets are going to be on that course. These guys are getting, are just really obnoxious right now. I'm having a hard time dealing with these wandering ghosts. And you need to know where the power pellets are so that you can sort of anticipate where you're going to go when the next pattern in the cycle strikes. And this is all so that you can save as much time as possible and accrue as many of those power... accrue as many of those ghosts as you possibly can without your power-up expiring. It, it's just... it's probably the most difficult aspect of the entire game. It, it, it's such an obtuse game mode that I'm really happy that they included it because it just adds this really strange dimension to this otherwise very, very rigid and consistent gameplay. Uh, I'm not expecting to do particularly well here because I did get a pretty good high score on my last run, and I think that's going to be to the to top. You can really see now how I'm trying to uh, manipulate the movement of the ghost. I'm not always successful since I'm not always actually moving in the right direction, but for the most part I've, I've got it down. It does get very difficult to maneuver precisely, especially when you get up to those maximum speeds. I mean, it, it really is incredibly fast, and this is not the hardest course by a long shot. The hardest courses are going to be those that have significantly more turns that have to be made on a single square in the grid. And when I say that, I, I mean the actual grid, because you want to look at every board as a grid, where every sort of square space is just its own coordinate. And that matters because it, it kind of helps you gauge how quickly you're going to have to react and change your movement in order to hit the next turn. And hitting those turns is extremely important to both maximizing your score, getting as much done as you possibly can, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, things are getting pretty crazy here, because I'm amassing quite the chain. But I don't, I don't have a chain going right now since I don't have a power-up. And that's probably what's going to kill me, as I have not been good about keeping that going. In fact, I've had a lot of silly screw-ups, to be sure. Let's see if I can keep this one chain going until the end of the game. Must eat very strategically. So I'm kind of rationing... Oh gosh. Oh no! Nope, I completely screwed that up. You know what, that's okay, I've still got three minutes. Uh, that is plenty of time to break my record if I play intelligently and not Kamikaze directly into the ghost that just came out of the spawn box. High order, I know. Tall order. You like those close calls? You can see where it gets to be quite the pain. When you're dealing with this many wandering ghosts on top of this massive snake, it's, it gets really nasty. Ah, especially when they pull crap like that and just get right in your way. I hate that more than anything. Oh, I'm just gonna screw myself over again here. Come on. We have more of those. Power up. 
Get refresh there. Let's eat some of these guys. Okay, I'm going to just do away with the chain because I'm I'm making terrible decisions, so why not just keep making those terrible decisions? Uh, this chain is over for sure. And that that's going to be the highest score I'm going to get this session because I, I really just screwed up my climbing there. You can see on the left side my current score is 71 and my high score was 88, so not even close. Uh, but you know what, that's okay. I don't need to finish this because I don't think I've actually shown off the time trial modes a whole lot. So the structure that they have for time trials is, is really strange here because they have a time trial which has a maximum time of 10 minutes, they have a time trial short total, and then they have the time trial shorts. Now I briefly mentioned earlier that the time trial short total is basically the accumulated time of all of the shorts. And the shorts are, well, short. They use very few patterns in the cycle of pellets. Whereas the big time trial will take you through all of them. Like all of the patterns in that cycle. So it's kind of... You, you play several of the regular shorts, and then you unlock the big time trial. Why you unlock the big time trial in the middle of the shorts, I don't know. It's how this game works. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm not even playing this as if it's time trial. You have to think differently because it's it's more about the speed, and especially in the shorts, you don't have time to invest in your speed by grabbing ghosts for your chain. You just need to get the fruits as quickly as possible, and so that's exactly what I'm doing right here. I'm just completely ignoring all the ghosts, ignoring the pattern I would usually take, opting for the shortest route possible. Oh, look at that. I, I actually shaved uh, almost six seconds off of my previous time. Uh, as you can see, the, the shorts are designed to be over very quickly. Usually these will have a maximum time of 30, 60, 90 seconds, depending on the course and how many fruits you're intended to pick up. What's really cool about this to me is that it... Oh, oh, that's cheap. Okay, I need to figure out a different way to handle this scenario. Okay, I think this is better, yep. It's weird just going in reverse. My mind is so trained to start... Okay, what are you doing, Red Ghost? Red Ghost is not being very nice to me. And I'm not really clear on why that is. He just seems intent on taking an alternate route to screw me over. Look at that. Look, look at this. This is, this is shameless behavior right here. Oh, this, is, this isn't really boding well for... No. No, I did something wrong here, for sure. That was actually the last fruit I was looking at right there, but, you know, that's okay. Oh, now he takes a different path. As I said, oh my goodness, what is your deal, man? I, I am not really sure on how ghost movement works. I'm just not positive. Although it seemed in that case that he was sort of wandering until I grabbed his attention. I really don't understand why this particular time trial is so difficult, but it kind of lends to what I've been saying about how incredibly confusing this game can be. Okay, let's see if this goes any better. I might save a little bit of time here. Maybe. No, not quite. That's okay. Now you kind of got an idea of how the time trials actually work. Bizarre as they are, th this is easily one of the strangest, if not the strangest, arcade game I have ever played. Not only because it completely throws off the shackles of what constitutes classic Pac-Man gameplay, but because it, it does bear so much nuance, as I've been saying since my beginner video. For the most part, it was it was pretty fun to try to conquer. It was a little tedious at times just because there were so many time trial shorts, and because each course uses that same set of patterns that it rehashes over and over and over again. You you deal with the same cycle regardless of the game mode you're playing in, and so by the time you've played 
the ghost combo, the score attack 5 minutes, the score attack 10 minutes, the big time trial, and the short time trials, you are really intimate with the patterns that are actually in that course. Now, the, the time trials can be great for, for sort of teaching you, uh, for, for emphasizing, educating you on how that course's patterns work, but beyond that, it, it, it is pretty repetitive. The worst part, for sure, was absolutely when those big eater time trials were really killing me because that difficulty spike doesn't make any sense in context with the rest of the game. Completing all the other time trials was an absolute breeze, but those two big eater time trials were absolutely ridiculous. However, after a lot of hard work, it, it has paid off, and I have gotten to the top, and I am confident in saying that this game has really been destroyed. Now that I've finished this first series, though, and now that you've seen what it looks like as I progress from complete noob to expert, in a matter of a couple weeks in this game I, I've never played before, I'm curious as to your thoughts on the matter. So if you would leave me some comments about what you think about this this format, what you think about this analysis that I'm providing, and possibly recommend games that you would like to see me attempt to conquer in the near future, that would be great. For now, this is Rocket Ethereal, signing off.